everybody, Tyrone the God 3 here. Welcome back to Dragon Ball Super Reviews. Today we'll be doing the review of episode 111. This episode is titled, The Surreal Supreme Battle, Hit vs. Jiren. This episode had Goku on that cliffhanger with Frieza. Turns out Frieza just gave Goku some of the energy that so that Goku can move around and fight and basically Frieza wants Goku to fight his battles for him so he won't have to fight the big fights it's kind of weird considering that Frieza is one of the one of the strongest characters in this entire tournament like Goku obviously Goku and Vegeta are Super Saiyan Blue which is the next strongest thing up ne uh, right below Jiren and Ultra Instinct and stuff so if we're talking like power tiering Frieza is stronger than a Super Saiyan Blue. I'm sure Goku can beat him, though, with the Kaioken Blue. But Frieza is stronger than your average Super Saiyan Blue. The problem is that he ran out of stamina too fast, but apparently he fixed that problem. So he should be good. Like, I don't see what Frieza has much to really fear about, but whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. Frieza gave Goku some of the energy, just like Goku did way back on Planet Namek. It was a callback. Dragon Ball Super is infamous for doing that because they really can't stick to their own thing. So they got to rely on nostalgia as, as energy fuel to keep going. But regardless, after that, Jiren just sort of does his meditation thing. And Tapo and Dispo basically go in to defend. And when they do that, though, Hit comes in and Hit basically is putting up a fight against Jiren. Although, I wouldn't say putting up a fight. He gets wrecked. Like, Hit tries to use time skip every time. And remember when Dispo was stopping Hit's time skip? Well, Jiren's just, like, hitting Hit in areas that he knows Hit's gonna be. Like, it's not even... It's almost like Jiren's doing the time skips, and Hit is just getting his ass whooped. Every, if anything, I believe time skip's making things worse for Jiren. For Hit, I'm sorry. Yeah, the time skips making things worse for Hit. So he's getting body rocked. And at this point, it's not looking very good. Even Hit knows that it's basically going to be over. So what he decides to do is, throughout most of this episode, it's mostly revolved around this fight. And what Hit decides to do is charge up this energy blast that he's learned, this new technique, where he used time skip to hit it, uh, to hit Jiren, but then fakes Jiren out, and it all comes down to this pressure point attack that Hit does on Jiren's body. And when he finally makes contact, the attack's job wasn't to hurt Jiren. The job of the attack was to basically contain Jiren into this embodiment of time. So now Jiren is stuck in this giant loop of time of out, outside the realm of like regular space. He's just stuck in time. And Jiren is actually budging his way out and Hit's having a hard time containing him in this. And he basically was like, yo, I'll just hold him until this tournament is over or as long as I have to. And then he even tries to like charge up an energy blast while all of this is taking place. Unfortunately, when he tries to launch that energy blast, Jiren outmatches it, knocks it out the way, completely crushes it, and then beats the crap out of Hit to the point where he knocks Hit out, and then Hit is eliminated from the tournament, and that's basically how that ends. Yeah, Hit loses, which isn't a big shocker to me. I figured something like this was going to happen, just not even with spoilers, just specifically due to the fact that they were doing this fight specifically to show how powerful Jiren is again by having a fighter that gave Goku such a hard time in a previous saga fight off against Jiren so that when Hit loses, we get the full impact of how powerful Jiren is. But it does, one thing I will praise this fight over, it does give us a sense that Hit actually got stronger. It, like, Hit wasn't stuck in the realm of just being mediocre powerful or the same level of strength he was when Goku fought him. So it's good to see that Hit actually got more powerful. Usually characters much like Hit show to be very one-dimensional, and don't progress much, but even Champa says that Hit was being a little out of character, as he's working more of a team now, instead of just solo, and that's mostly because of this tournament, and how big the stakes are, I guess, and just how powerful Jiren is, and a lot of people actually commented very negatively when I stated that Jiren didn't have much of a personality, but I still stand behind that statement, because 
literally, I want to make a video that further explains this, but for now, just to give the short version, a lot of characters that are introduced in a story, just in story in general, usually, I don't, don't even necessarily have to have a backstory, but they can be introduced in a way that makes them, you know, want me to be interested, whereas Jiren, Jiren's introduced, doesn't say anything, crosses his arms for literally 90% of this tournament, then fights Goku, doesn't say anything for real at all still, except a couple of phrases, and then just proceeds to beat the crap out of everybody because he's so strong, it's just like, okay, and then what? Like, I don't get a character outside of Hit, outside uh, outside of Jiren, outside of folding his arms. As far as Hit goes, he's really silent, too, which made this really awkward because both Hit and Jiren have kind of the same personality. These silent, these silent cross-armed fighters with angry stares that gave Goku hard times in, in his fights. So, when you bring those two personalities together, it gets a little awkward. Thankfully, they decided to develop Hit a little more. But at the same time, you still run into two fighters that have the personality of cardboard, except one just has colorful cardboard and the other one's just cardboard. Yes, I still stand behind my statement that they both are very much blank characters with not much added to them. He is getting better, but Jiren is still just, you know, I'm just going to be cross-armed silent character. Yes, I know he had that slight cocky personality when he decided to meditate in the middle of the tournament like he doesn't need to waste his time against weaker fighters but that's not anything that really impresses me because it's a trait that was used in literally all of anime so okay i guess overall the episode ends on that note we reach halftime of the tournament the atmosphere changes for some reason i don't know why that happens but that's basically it Like I said, in this episode, I do like the fact that these characters, uh, I do like the the fact that Hit got some development. It wasn't a lot, but it was some development. And I do like how it shows that Hit actually got a little stronger, too. He wasn't stuck in the realm of just being, oh, at the same level Goku was when he reached Kaioken Blue, and that's it. So it's good to see that Hit actually got a little bit better. Uh, we can see some progression with this character. Kind of wish we got to see some of that on screen rather than off screen. But regardless, still a pretty good fight to watch. Um, Basically, I went over a lot of the cons before. Like I said, a lot of this, this, this I don't, it's Jiren. It's mostly Jiren. And like I said, I know a lot of people in the comments are upset with my verdict on Jiren, but I'm going to stand behind that statement. Like, like, I believe a series, even a series that I like, well, not this series, but a franchise, I like the Dragon Ball franchise, even a franchise that I like has its obvious flaws, and Jiren, to me, is one of those flaws, I just, even his design makes him seem boring, he's just really buff, he's bald, he's got this gray color palette, and then black, bulgy insect eyes, like, he's, he's easy to draw, and he almost feels like a fan character to me he's like super power he's he's kind of like what would happen if a kid were to invent a villain for dragon ball z and yeah th that's just simply what i get out of him i don't get anything spectacular and before you go off into this rant about it yes design can actually make a character's personality show off as well which can bring out a lot in a character. Why do you think Goku is orange and black, or orange and blue, I'm sorry, as his primary colors? Because those two colors contrast against each other and they pop on the screen. They, I'm sorry, they complement each other. They complement each other and they pop on the screen. Vegeta is blue and white because blue, and white, and yellow combined pop on the screen. You can see Vegeta from a mile away because of that. You recognize these characters just based off their color palettes alone. And I'm sorry, Jiren is just what? Basic red, black, and then just gray on his face. He's forgettable. You can replace his face with literally anything. If anything, Tapo and Dispo have more going for him because purple and black and red all contrast against each other. So, yes, I stand behind my statement. Even Jiren's design makes him boring. I'm just bored when I see Jiren as a, as a character. Yes, he's strong, but then what? See the problem here?
overall this episode was okay though like it's not the worst offender of episodes i've seen in fact this was actually a pretty decent episode to watch if you just take into account that hit was fighting jaren although the ending is pretty obvious that hit was going to lose it was a losing battle right from the get-go and obviously we need goku to get back in there and fight with his ultra instinct I do like the fact that Goku using his Ultra Instinct mode didn't end the tournament right then and there. It didn't end the fight with Jiren right there and there. Because it gives Goku a chance to fight Jiren back. However, what this also does is pretty much give us our ending. We know Goku's going to have to fight Jiren again using the Ultra Instinct again, which is going to lead to the final battle. Which means all the fights that lead up to this point are just kind of there. So it's almost like they spoiled us, but it was an intentional spoil. So it's called foreshadowing in a way, but at the same time, it kind of loses. There's a foreseeable future in the end of this saga, or at least near the end of this saga, that's very visible. And unless they want to do some major story changes or something, we're not going to see anything that deviates from the path that the story is obviously going. But with that said, the next episode is A Saiyan's Vow, Vegeta's Resolution. I'll see you all then, everybody. Tyrone the God 3. Out.